Hey guys, Flay here. Today I'll be making a quick guide on the phase 6 of Dragon Song Surpass Ultimate, that is a double dragon phase, so let's get right into it. Let's break down the mechanic. There will be 3 fire tethers from Nidhogg and 3 ice tethers from Ross Felgor. At the same time, there will be a tank buster. How we resolve the tethers is there will be each player stacking with another person with the opposite tether. The reason for this is if you get hit by only one tether here, you are going to get a debuff that will last 30 seconds. That is, if you get hit by the Nidhogg fire tether only, you are going to get a 30 second pyrotech debuff which, when you move, you are going to die. If you get hit by Rasfal Ghost tether only, you are going to get frozen for 30 seconds. For this strat, we make our white mage always stand southwest and our red mage always stand southeast. The rest have to adjust. So in the beginning, there will be the melees in front right here. As you can see, there is this dog patch right here. That is the safe spot. The next two safe spots will be near the white mage and the red mage. So here, there is a reaper with a fire tether and the dancer with the ice tether. So me, I would normally be in front here. That is a samurai. But since here I got the ice tether, I have to adjust. So I move to the white mage. In the case that the white mage also had an ice tether, then I would adjust and move towards the red mage. So here the tethers will be going off and this will resolve the mechanic safely. Let's take a look at this video to demonstrate an example of the tethers. So here you can see I get an opposite tether as a reaper. So I'm just going to stand right in the middle and everyone else will adjust. So here the tethers go off and this resolves the mechanic. On another video here, you can see I have the same tether as a reaper, so I'm going to adjust here and move towards the white mage, and this resolves the tether mechanic as well. Let's take a look on how the tank buster mechanic works. Both tanks have to check whether the bosses are glowing or not. If both bosses are glowing, there will be a shared tank buster between both tanks. If only one boss is glowing, then the boss is going to do a conal AoE in the middle, and the opposite tank who has aggro on the boss is going to get a tank buster. So let's say for this instance that the gunbreaker has aggro onto Nidhogg and the paladin has aggro onto Rosfelgar and both of them are glowing. Both of our tanks are going to go in the middle and stack. If only Nidhogg is glowing, then both tanks will move away and the paladin is going to get the tank buster while Nidhogg will be doing a conal AoE in the middle. In the case that Rosfelgar is glowing only, then Rosfelgar is going to do a conal AoE in the middle and the gunbreaker is going to get the tank buster. Let's take a look at this video to demonstrate the tank busters. So here you can see that Rosfelgar is glowing right there on the top right. And when we take a look at Nidhogg, Nidhogg is glowing as well, as you can see right there. This means that both tanks are going to share the tank buster. So here as the tethers go off, the shared tank buster goes off as well. There is no conal AoE in the middle. And this resolved the tank buster as well as the tethers. Let's take a look at another video example. So here you will see that Rosfalgar is not glowing. But when we check Nidhogg, Nidhogg is glowing. This means that Nidhogg is going to do a cleave in the middle of the arena. And our paladin who has aggro on Rosfalgar is going to get the tank buster. So here as the cosmo finishes. You will see that Nidhogg is going to do this cleave in the middle and then there will be this huge AoE onto our Paladin on the top right side and our Gunbreaker is going to go onto the top left side to be safe and this resolves the first mechanic. After the first mechanic, all DPSs have to spread out. The reason is because Nidhogg is going to cast Mortal Vow on a random DPS and this also does an AoE puddle. Anyone else who gets hit by this is going to get their HP reduced. Mortal Vow has to be passed 4 times throughout the fight. In the case it is not passed 4 times, Nidhogg is going to enrage. Another very important thing to note here is, anyone who gets killed by Rasvelgar's mechanics is going to cause Rasvelgar to enrage. Let's take a look at the next mechanic. Both Nidhogg and Rasvelgar are going to be casting Akafa onto the group. This needs to be soaked into light parties. So here we have the Gunbreakers, the Samurai, the Dancer and the White Mage and the Paladin, the Reaper, the Red Mage and the Sage that are going to be soaking this into two groups. Another thing to also note here is you have to keep both bosses below 3% HP. In the case one is higher, they will cause one of the Akafas to kill the group. There will be a purple tether and a white tether to indicate this. The purple tether means that Nidhogg needs to be hit more. 
The white desert means that Roswell girl needs to be hit more. Another thing to also note in this diagram is the samurai has the mortal vow. Let's take a look at all of this in a video. So after the first mechanic, all the pieces spread out, and you will see here our reaper gets the mortal vow debuff. After this, there is Akafa. So here you will see there is this white desert. This means that Rasfalgar's HP is more than Nidog. So here we are going to be hitting Rasfalgar a bit, and then maintain the HP between both bosses. And here Akafa is going to go off, and you will see the AOEs go off onto both of the parties. Let's take a look at the third mechanic. Here Nidhogg is going to dive through the arena and Rasvalgar is going to cause hallowed wings and cleave another half of the arena making only one quadrant save. This can be in different formats. So Nidhogg could be diving right here. This means that the mechanic will be resolved at 2. If Nidhogg is diving right here, then this means that the mechanic is going to resolve at D as you can see in the diagram. In the case that hallowed wing is like here, then this means that the mechanic will be resolved towards B, and if Nidhogg is going to be here, the mechanic is going to get resolved at 4. Now let's take a look back to the initial spot of this diagram. The next part about this mechanic that you need to know is Rosvalgar is going to target the two first players or the two nearest players with tank buster AOEs. This needs to be taken by the tanks. How you determine whether it will be the two furthest or the two nearest is you have to look at Rosvalgar's head. If the head is raised up, it will target the two furthest players. In this case, the tanks have to go away from Rosvalgar and the party has to move near. In the case that Rosvalgar's head is lower, this means that the tanks have to be the closest to Rosvalgar and the party have to be the furthest. Let's take a look at the hallowed wings mechanic on the video. So here you will see that Rasvalgar is casting Hallowed Wings towards the left side. This means that the right side is safe. And next thing we check is whether Nidhogg is cleaving the front or the back side. So here Nidhogg is going to be cleaving the back side. Next part is we check the head of Rasvalgar. It is raised here. This means that the tank have to move away from Rasvalgar and the party have to move inside the hitbox to be the closest players. So here the party moves in, the tanks move out and the busters go off as you can see right here. Let's take a look at a second video example. So here Rasvalgar is casting hallowed wings and he's cleaving the left side. This means the right side is safe. Next thing we check is where Nidhogg is going to be cleaving. This time it is going to be towards the front side. This means the back side is going to be safe. And the next thing we see here is Rasvalgar's head is lowered. This means that the two nearest targets to Rasvalgar are going to get the tank buster airways. That is our tanks have to be near. So here the party moves all the way back and the tanks stay slightly in but not all the way inside because Nidhogg is going to cleave in the frontal AOE right there. So as you can see the tank busters goes off, Nidhogg's cleave goes off as well in the front and this resolves the mechanic. The next part of this phase is the first mortal vow pass. So here the samurai who had the mortal vow indicated by this arrow is going to pass it to the gunbreaker. Everyone else stays out of middle, so this mortal vow gets passed correctly. Another very important thing to note here is you should never pass your mortal vow to your healers. The reason is mortal vow gets you a healing reduced debuff and if the healers got this, they won't be able to heal the next mechanics. Let's take a look at the next major mechanic. Nidog is going to cause raw flames while Rasvalgar is going to dive throughout half of the arena. In this diagram, the safe spots are going to be towards B or D. The next part about this mechanic is there's going to be three sets of firebombs that are going to spawn onto the arena. Just like the extreme mode, these firebombs do a cardinal cleave based on where the location is at. These always start by spawning in the middle and then onto two intercardinals. In this case, it is towards one, towards two, and towards three. Another thing to also note is it always spawns in a line manner. In this case, it is towards 2, middle and B. It could also be towards 4, middle and D as well. The next part that you need to know about the raw flames mechanic is 4 players are going to get targeted by a purple debuff, 2 players are going to get targeted by a white debuff and 2 players by no debuff. At the end of this mechanic, the purple debuff players are going to have a knockback AOE around them and hence these players need to spread out. The players with a white debuff need another player to stack 
near them because there's going to be a stack AOE around them and in the case, if they take that solo, it is going to explode and will kill everyone in the party. We make it so that the players with no debuff each stack with one of the players who have the white debuff. The next part of this mechanic is Nidhogg is going to be casting 4 sets of Akmons onto the party, leaving bleed puddles behind and anyone who stays too long into these bleed puddles is going to die. We make it so that we always start towards where the third fire orb spawned at, in this case it is towards D, and then we move from the edge of the arena moving towards the middle. So here starting at D we are going to move forward and then curve towards the middle. You can see here the fire AOE on the middle goes off and then this creates a safe spot and then the second one goes off here by this time the party should have been already onto the safe spot right here and then they move towards the middle and as soon as they move towards the middle the third fire orb AOE goes off. Before the debuffs resolve, Nidhogg is going to cast Hot Tail or Hot Wings. In the case it is Hot Tail, Nidhogg is going to cleave the middle of the arena and hence the outside is going to be safe. In the case it is hot wing, only the middle of the arena is going to be safe. Now here you can see the debuffs are resolving. We make it so that the players with the purple debuffs always run towards Nidhogg and the players with the white debuffs always run towards Rasfelgor. So in this case it is the sage who has a white debuff and the gunbreaker who has a white debuff. They get stuck by the reaper and the white mage who had no debuffs and these players get these AOEs around them. And in the next case, onto the hot wings, these players slightly spread towards Nidhogg and the player having the white debuff, one of them stays in the middle and the next one goes all the way inside Rasfelgar. Let's take a look at the raw flame mechanic in this video. So here Nidhogg finishes casting raw flames and as soon as the cost finishes, everyone gets their respective debuffs. Next part is the first set of fire orbs spawned in the middle. Nidhogg also starts casting Arkmoon. We look at where the next set of fire orbs is at. So the next set is going to be towards 1 right there, this means that the safe spot is going to be towards this side towards 4. So we move towards 4 and you can see the third set of fire orbs spawned right there. And then we move towards the edge of the arena and the first Akmon goes off. So here the Akmon leaves a bleed puddle, we ensure that we do not move too fast otherwise we are going to get clipped by this AOE of the first orb. We move just slightly out, the second one goes off and the first fire orb AOE goes off as well. We move towards the middle onto the safe spot and the third Akmon goes off leaving the third puddle behind and you will see the second fire orb AOE is going off. And then the last set of Akmon goes off leaving the last set of fire puddles and here there is a last set of fire orbs is also going off as you can see right here. Next part is Nidog is going to be casting hot wing, this means inside is safe towards the middle. Since I have the purple debuff, I am going to be moving towards Nidhogg. So here middle is safe, I move all the way inside and then hot wing goes off, you can see that here Nidhogg cleaves the sides and the middle is safe. The puddles goes off as you can see here, the purple debuffs and they cause a knockback to anyone who gets clipped by this. Let's take a look at another raw flame example. So the boss finishes casting raw flames here. You will see I get the white debuff this time. And here we look at where Rasfelgar is. Rasfelgar is going to be cleaving behind. This means that the front is still safe. The first set of orb spawns in the middle. The next set is going to be spawning towards 2. This means towards 4 is going to be safe because the last set is going to be all the way here towards uh, southeast. So all of us go towards 4 just like the previous video. We start dodging directly in front of 4 and then we curve towards the middle. But this time you will see that Nidhogg is casting hot tail, this means the middle is not safe. So we move outside and one of the players who does not have any debuff is going to come stacking with me. So the reaper who does not have any debuff is going to go stack with our gunbreaker right there and the Dancer is going to come stuck with me right here because he also does not have any debuff. If you're wondering what this debuff right here is, it is basically the Mortal Vow Pass. So here the Dancer comes to me and here the AoEs goes off, the players with the purple AoEs debuffs go towards Nidhogg and the ones who has the white debuffs go all the way towards Rasfelgar. 
The next part of this phase is going to be the second mortal vow pass. So here the gunbreaker passes it to the paladin. Everyone stays out of the middle. And the next part is going to be another set of Ark Alpha. Just resolve this just like the first one, making sure that both bosses are within 3% HP threshold. The next mechanic will be another set of hallowed wings, but this time it will be with hot wings or hot tails. So here in this diagram, you can see it is hot wings. This means the middle is going to be safe. And Rosvalgar's head is up. This means the two furthest players are going to be targeted with a tank buster away. So our tanks move all the way away towards Nidhogg. One tank stays towards the middle, making sure they can keep up time because Nidhogg is also targetable here. And in the next slide, you can see another example here where it is hot tail, but Rosvalgar's head is down. So this means that everyone will go outside because the middle is not safe. And uh, our tanks will come closer towards Rosvalgar because Rosvalgar's head is down and he will target the two closest players with the tank buster airways. Let's take a look at this video to demonstrate the mechanic. So here you see Rosvalgar is cleaving the right side. This means the left side is safe, but his head is also down. This means that the tanks need to be closer towards Rosvalgar. The party is going to move towards Nidhogg. Next thing we look at here is whether Nidhogg is casting hot wing or hot tail. It is hot tail. This means outside is safe. So we move all the way out here. Our tank is going to be moving towards Rosvalgar as you can see right there. And the tank buster AOS goes off, the hot tail goes off and the party is safe right here. And this resolves the mechanic. The next part of this phase will be the third set of the Mortal Vow pass. So here the Paladin is going to be passing this to the Dancer and everyone else will stay out of middle. The next part of this phase will be just like the very first mechanic of the Double Dragons phase, except this time we will not be stacking the Fire and Ice Tethers together because we will need these debuffs for a later coming mechanic. At the same time here, there will also be the Tank Busters going off, so make sure to pay attention to whether the bosses are glowing or not. For our strat, we ensure the Fire Tethered players go towards North and the Ice Tethered players go towards South. Now the tanks here will be moving on the intercardinal positions onto the safe spot so they do not get the debuffs from these ice and fire desert players. In the case it is a tank buster stack, then the tanks will be moving towards the middle because there will be no corner AOE towards the middle if both bosses are glowing. The next part of this mechanic will be two dives from Nidhogg and Rosfelgar. Here you can see Rosfelgar is cleaving this side and Nidhogg is cleaving this side. We make it so that the players having the ice debuff stand towards Nidhogg and the players having the fire debuff stand towards Rosfelgar. This is so they neutralize the debuffs that these players have. Please also make sure that the players having the fire debuff do not move after the pyrotic debuff goes off because if they move they are going to get dotted and die. Another thing to also note here, the tanks have to stand in front of the party, in front of these dragons, otherwise the party is also going to die as the tanks have to act as a shield for the party to take less damage. The last part of this phase will be the enrage, but before that there will be a last set of mortal vow pass, that is a fourth pass, which will be from our dancer to another DPS right here. Another thing to also pay attention to here is everyone needs to ensure they are standing towards the edge of the arena because Nidhogg is going to smash to the middle and do proximity AoE towards everyone. Let's take a look at the last mechanic in this video. Now do note that since my static is still progging the enrage part of this phase, I do not have complete clean footage of the last part. So here there will be many players that will die. I am standing a bit too close towards Rosvelgar. He is going to cast a Kornal AoE and I am going to get clipped and die. And other players are going to clip and die right there. So here you will see that this goes off and then the two bosses jump towards north and then are going to dive from north towards south. And here's the cost cauterize. Our gunbreaker tries to survive. And then Nidhogg just jumps towards the middle as well as Rosfelgar right there. And then they start casting Revenge on the Horde. This is the Enrage. By here you will have to bring the boss around this HP. Assuming that we were alive, we would have killed it with the remaining 2 minute burst left. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this video was helpful to you and I'll see you guys later on.